The Witch Queen has been at her games for a very long time. We've seen the tricks on the surface, commanding our missions as Osiris, the Curse in the Dreaming City, and also the Endless Night. Something that is more mysterious and that has sort of slipped under the surface is Savathun's song though. We've talked about it before and who sung it, but we really don't know what impact it has. Is it brainwashing these characters or is it simply just a song to stir mass hysteria? Today we have an answer of how this hive infection started spreading amongst the tower and it actually starts with a pretty big character. So here are the characters who have been heard humming or singing this little tune. So here's Sabathun's song. And here are characters who have been tied to it. I'm on the moon, it's made of cheese. Hey, three eyes. Shax says you sang him a little ditty. What? Shax, Chunky Titan, One Horn. Did you sing him a song on the moon? What a senseless question. Yeah, I didn't think so. Stay off this channel. Should I need you, I'll call. Wait. Uh, I didn't hang up. Does that oaf still keep that skull with him? In the tower? Yeah, hangs it over his spot. I wouldn't have tangled with that thing. Desperate times. This little ditty. Did it go? Hmm. <laughs> That would be the one. <laughs> Rise up as one, march toward the sun. So, there's a lot of them. A new lore tab tells us exactly how this mess started, though, and it's actually really cool. Now this card is told from the perspective of Savathun in her crystal form, which we see near Mara's chambers. If you hear it, remove your helmet and face the closest Corsair. They will know what must be done. Queen Mara. There's a saying among con artists. Half the fun is showing the mark which cup hid the ball before you take their money. Savathun understands. In her crystalline prison, she reflects on all her surreptitious winks and little nods, the risks taken and the boundaries pushed to keep herself entertained and her worm fed. Before, Osiris stumbles as he walks through the city. Beneath his robe, something erupts in a frenzy of motion. He pauses to compose himself and then walks on, trailing careless splatters of black fluid. Before, Osiris watches the crucible match unfold. He does not cheer for either opponent. When a ghost appears to revive the defeated warrior, Osiris leans forward in careful study. When Saint places a hand on his forearm, Osiris holds impossibly still just to see what the other man will do. Before, Osiris sits by the campfire as Crow and the Guardian share a drink. Osiris watches them with rapt attention. Crow is laughing, he passes the bottle, and Osiris, hands numb, puzzles at it. His mouth hangs in half-smile before he takes a long drink, slacking a bone-deep thirst. Before, Osiris takes a shaky step forward. The high celebrant howls in the catacombs, and he hears his sister's voice buried in its roar. He feels his heart beating in his chest and is so enraptured by the sensation that he forgets to be frightened. Before, Savathun, physical form, a twisting instar, emerges from the shadows and crawls over the shattered pieces of the ghost. She reaches toward the ruined man. Before, Savathun squeezes through the calcified channels of ascendant energy and manifests within the dangling Ahamkara skull. 
The man standing below the netting senses her appearance. His light flares as he draws his weapon with impossible speed. She has only a moment. She pushes her face down through the ropes, opens her mouth, and sings. The man stops, then slowly holsters his weapon. He turns, crosses his arms, and forgets. She melts awkwardly back into the skull as best she can, though a tangle of spindly elbows, licorice black, still juts from its sockets. She turns her attention to her quarry across the gap and hums her song softly to mask herself. Soon, the man below begins to hum along with her, and she smiles. So this card is relaying all the events and steps that Savathun took to get to this point in time. Now, this went backwards if you didn't pick up on that. So Shax's corruption with the song was first, Savathun finding the pieces of a shattered ghost, most likely Sagira, and then the High Celebrant taking over Osiris' body, and then all the way up until now where she's in this crystal-like form. So Shax's corruption, the big thing here, and the Ahamkara Skull were the first entryway into our Golden Age secrets and the tower, and ultimately finding Osiris on the moon. These little Ahamkara Skulls that have been above Shax forever, Savathun was basically spying on us. Savathun's song. It's a viral chant. It can never be unheard. Now that Savathun has announced herself, relics of the dark across the system have begun to awaken. Tell Shax to remove that skull immediately. Now it seems this corruption may have began around Season of the Arrivals. Yes, the Pyramid Ships and the Black Fleet arrived, but also Savathun. A entry from that season sparked this debacle a long time ago. It's from the Traveler's Chosen card. I push into my Asific den and he is there. I see him looking over the side, toward his traveler, head bent. He is speaking softly, but I can hear him. Anyone who was listening could. He waits for a response, and as do I as well, tense, curious. He stands attentively, this loyal dog of a man. It is no time at all for me, but for him the hours creep by in silence. I am ready to choke the voice of his traveler if it answers him but there is nothing. He tightens his grip on the railing. I feel something shift inside him and a new possibility presents itself. Again, I press against the sockets. The net creaks softly with my eagerness. Someone approaches and he turns his back to his traveler. There is an exchange obscured by the Rubicon thrash. He is given reports. Hope bleeds from him. He gives the messenger a token of his faith. They accept it without understanding its meaning. He watches as they leave. There is a hollow place in his center. It is beautiful. I return wearily. I do not see him, but I hear him. He speaks to all with a voice thick with grief. I must now learn how far I have been set back. I reach to him tentatively. Strength. I push and feel only sweet, soft rot. I am delirious with pleasure. It gave them no answers. It was a reflex, the spasm of dumb muscle. A song of joy rises within me. Now. So that line discussing a man approaching with lost hope makes me kind of feel like it's Osiris. Now then again, it depends on when this card takes place as it came out in Season of the Arrivals and Sagira wasn't gone yet, I don't think. Correct me if I'm wrong. So why would Savathun do this? Does this song actually have an effect on these characters and their minds? Or is it just a decoy? That we think the song is an issue when in fact it's just a piece of music that gets stuck in their heads and Savathun is playing with us. Now in that first card I read, it seems it would have an effect because it says that Shax has light flares and he draws his weapon with impossible speed because he knows something is there. But then she pushes her face down through the ropes, opens her mouth and sings. Suddenly, Shaq stops, holsters his weapon, and forgets what happened. Although Sabathun's song seems like a mystery to some extent, with this information from this new card, it gives us insight onto how this corruption began. We know the song does something, it corrupts the mind, it messes with you, and it all started from these Ahamkara skulls above Lord Shaq's. Anyway, Guardians, I hope you enjoyed this lore video. If you'd like to see some others just like it and some Destiny mysteries, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching. My name's Evade, and I'll catch you, Guardians, in the next one.